on the historic day when King Richard III was laid to rest. We're here live for the final moments of this epic story. In the foreground outside the cathedral is the truck that carried Richard's tombstone, which will be moved into position overnight. Today is the moment when time collapsed and the medieval age burst through to the 21st century. Killed in battle and lost for 500 years, Richard's remains were discovered under a corporation car park just over the road behind me. Tonight we shall see Richard's tombstone as it moves towards its resting place here. Along with exclusive extended highlights of this morning's service and those remarkable scenes when 20,000 people came to pay their respects. Joining me later, historical novelist Philippa Gregory and dramatist Lord Julian Fellows to help make sense of these events. And at the end of this programme, we share a minute's silence with those who made it all happen. This morning we witnessed a moving and historic service when the Archbishop of Canterbury buried King Richard III. It was a moment when the nation watched England's last medieval king laid to rest in the beginning of the 21st century. As Dean of Leicester, I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, who for his people died and rose in the conquest of love. More than 500 years ago, King Richard III was buried by Franciscan friars a few yards from here. His grave hurriedly dug and a simple funeral without pomp would have been offered. Today we are committing his mortal remains to the consecrated ground of this cathedral. Let us pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The reading is taken from the book of Exodus. And Moses took with him the bones of Joseph, who had required a solemn oath of the Israelites, saying, God will surely take notice of you, and then you must carry my bones with you from here. They set out from Succoth and camped at Etham, on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day, and to lead them along the way, and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light, so that they might travel by day and by night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. Here ends the reading. Search, find, honour. The triple mandate giving, given to the Looking for Richard project four years ago has broken open not just a car park but a nation's story. King Richard has stepped from the pages of history into the fullest glare of the world's attention. The search has laid to rest half a millennium of mystery surrounding his burial and revealed that Richard belongs not just to the archaeologists, the chroniclers and the curators, but to all of us. The Richard effect has revealed a deep connection between a global audience and this young king who bore his disability with courage and knew the pain of bereavement and loss close to his heart. Many amongst the crowds who have thronged to see the casket came bearing their own burdens of grief. Others came to contemplate the reality of their own mortality. All have confounded the skeptics by their respect for the remains of an anointed king and a baptized Christian whose lot it was to live and die at a turning point of our history. We dare to pray for Richard today and for all who have gone before us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. 
because in God alone we trust. To him be the power and the glory for all time and for all eternity. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, creator and redeemer of souls, who by the prophecy of Ezekiel deigned to bind together dry bones with sinews, to cover them with skin and flesh and to put into them the breath of life. As we return the bones of your servant Richard to the grave, we beseech you to grant him a peaceful and quiet resting place through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We have entrusted our brother Richard to God's mercy, and we now commit his human remains to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies, that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, 
and rose again for us. To him be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. From the earth you formed me, with flesh you clothed me. Lord, my Redeemer, raise me up at the last day. My bones, scripted in light upon cold soil, a human braille. My skull, scarred by a crown, emptied of history. Describe my soul as incense, votive, vanishing. Your own the same. Grant me the carving of my name. These relics bless. Imagine you retie a broken string and on it thread a cross, the symbol severed from me when I died. The end of time. The unknown, unfelt loss. Unless the resurrection of the dead. Or oh, I once dreamed of this. Your future breath in prayer for me, lost long, forever found, or sensed you from the backstage of my death, as kings glimpse shadows on a battleground. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and to all humanity, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <coughs> Let us bless the Lord. In the summer of 2012, Philippa Langley persuaded the University of Leicester to look for Richard III under a council car park. The chance of finding Richard was a, a million to one. But in the very first trench was a skeleton with a curved spine. The feeling of that point was really one of mounting disbelief. Now the hard work began, proving this was in fact Richard. The only way to know was through DNA. Enter the King's closest known living relative, Michael Ibsen. If you look at the DNA of Michael and you look at the DNA from the skeletal remains, there's a match. Wow. Blimey. Now, nearly three years later, the day dawned when Richard's remains would leave the University of Leicester, whose guardianship they had been under since they were exhumed, to begin their final journey. First, to the site of his death at Fenlane Farm, where the Battle of Bosworth was fought. In this most peaceful of places, let us remember all who fought, lived and died on these fields in 1485. Soils from the important places in Richard's life were brought together and blessed in an intimate ceremony. They would later accompany Richard into his grave. At Bosworth Field, Richard's remains were pulled on a medieval cart to the summit of the battlefield. Right. Oh. Grant King Richard III a place of rest and peace, where the world of dust and ashes has no dominion. The Duke of Gloucester lit a ceremonial beacon that would burn until Richard's reburial. From there, the procession made its way back into the city of Leicester over Bow Bridge, where it was greeted by thousands of onlookers before arriving at the cathedral, where Richard's remains were officially handed over to the church. It is now my duty as the appointed representative of the University of Leicester to transfer into your custody Richard's remains, so that they may be buried with honour and dignity. A service of Compline then took place, where Cardinal Vincent Nichols, the Archbishop of Westminster, addressed the congregation. In his day, political power was invariably won or maintained on the battlefield. We may thank God that here, political power struggles are now settled in a rather different